Hello kids, Darth Magnus back with another tech video this time. And I'm finally going custom, uh, more specifically a custom mechanical keyboard. Alrighty, so first I guess I should show you guys what I've been using the last couple of years. Uh, it is a Cooler Master SK650 uh, full-size keyboard. As you can see, it has the 10 keys here. Uh, it comes with Cherry MX switches, which are uh, not hot swappable. They're um, soldered into the board. They can be replaced, but you know, that's a pain in the butt. Uh, I also upgraded the, the keycaps uh, with some Japanese brand that I found that also has uh, these low profile designs. Um, I think overall, I've liked this keyboard quite a bit. It's got a little bit of flex to it, which you know is, is uh, par for the course for a $65 uh, keyboard. But you know it's got some pretty nice features. Uh, it had the low profile design that I liked just because I was very you know familiar with laptops and stuff like that. I wanted to keep that low pro um, typing style, I guess. Uh, comes with a Type C at the very top, uh, fully addressable RGB lighting, and uh, I think it's served me well, but. Uh, I just needed a, an upgrade. Uh, I really wanted something very cool, something that I built on my own. It had a nicer feel uh, than just these standard Cherry MX switches. They're nice, they do the job, but I just want something more. And enter the Fecker, or Fecker, however you pronounce it, IK75 Pro uh, wireless keyboard. That's actually another thing. Uh, this is, a, of course, a, a wired keyboard. And I have to unplug it and you know hide my cable every time that I have to use my work laptop on my desk, that kind of deal. But with this, I can just keep it in my drawer while it's charging. I'm gonna run a, a Type-C cable in there, let it charge, pop it out when I want a game, and then put it back whenever I gotta get back to work, unfortunately. Uh, so I think this is gonna serve uh, pretty much every need that I that I <laughs> that I that I have. Uh, it is Type-C has full RGB uh, lighting. Uh, all the switches are also hot swappable. Yay! Uh, this is going to be my first hot swappable keyboard, which is going to be super cool. Um, it also has an 8,000 uh, milliamp hour battery, which is massive. Pretty much all the keyboards that I've seen are about three, 4,000 milliamp. This is 8,000, so I can have the RGB going all day, every day, for days. Should be good. Uh, it's also a 75% mechanical keyboard, so I am going to get rid of my beloved uh, keypad here, but uh, I think it'll just look um, just cleaner, take up less space on my desktop, so that should be cool. All right, so here is the keyboard that I'm going to be working on. Um, there's tons of build videos on these uh, Fekers, Fekers, whatever, um, so I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to do a little quick build montage. Um, when I do that. Oh, and it also has a volume knob, which I think is super cool, that I have not had a chance to uh, get with any other keyboards that I've had. So that should be very, very cool. Uh, I also have some uh, pudding keycaps uh, from uh, HK Gaming. Uh, these are all uh, vibrant red. Uh, I figured they, I, I wanted something that would kind of pop. I think these will do the trick. Uh, they also have the pudding sides to it, so you should get a nice RGB uh, glow to them. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them, but I'm going to give them a shot here um, just to see if they work for me. Uh, I also have two different types of switches. I have the Aqua King and the Silent uh, Hippo, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll put the caption here. Here's the thing. Uh, I am married, and my wife is... Uh, less than enthused about my gaming, especially at night when she's trying to sleep. Uh, we have a one bedroom condo, so my game, my battle station is in the bedroom, uh, which is about five feet away from where she sleeps. So the clickety-clacking of my keyboard at night is kind of annoying for her, totally understandable. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm going to be building a custom keyboard for myself that also works for my significant other. So we can kind of have a compromise here. Now, uh, I want to stay with the, the Aqua Kings um, just because 
these are some of the best switches available on the market. My friend Henry has these and they are incredible. Um, very little wiggle, uh, very precise, they're pre-lubed. Um, he highly recommends them, so I would like to use these. Plus they have a beautiful sound, a nice stock to them. Um, so I'd like to stick, stick with these, but just in case I also ordered these, um, again, can't remember the name, <laughs> Silent Hippo or something like that. But these are ultra quiet switches. So not a lot of thock, just ninja style, just clicking every single time. And I'll do a sound comparison of not only my Cherry Mech Switch keyboard here, but also the Aqua Kings and these silent switches so you can hear the difference. And also kind of give you a quick review of what I think of each switch. Um, basically, I'll just set up two WASD kind of setups side by side on the keyboard and I'll test them out uh, give you guys the uh, the sound test to them, and then I'll talk to my wife, <laughs> see which she prefers and she can live with. Um, so that is it for the switches. That should be pretty cool. And I also got a lube um, uh, kit, just because uh, I guess the the support little tabs or metal brackets or whatever um, stabilizers. There you go. Uh, I guess they have pretty bad lubing from the factory, so I'll go ahead and, and douse those in some lube, and that should take care of some of that pinging sound that some people complain. But uh, that should be about it. Quick build montage, sound test, and then we'll decide which uh, switch we're gonna go with. All right, sweetie. Now I need your opinion. From where you're sitting, okay, which is about five, six feet away from my desk, which one is the least annoying? All right, so that's the Cooler Master. These are the Aqua Kings. And these are the quiet switches. 
Obviously, the quality for Jesus. Yeah, but don't you think this is a nice sound? That's a beautiful sound. But is it too loud? Like, which one will make you want to kill me the least? The quiet one. <sighs> All right. Obviously, the quiet ones. What is the goal here? Don't ask me. I don't know. I was hoping that you'd be cool. All right. If you want me to say the second one, then say, what do you think sounds the coolest? Okay, which one sounds the coolest? This one? This one? Or this one? Yeah, the second one does. So, but still... You would like me to keep these, right? It really doesn't matter that much because I am directly next to you. So if you like the second one, then get the second well, one. Well, I mean, like, in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's extremely obnoxious, but... <sighs> All right. I'll go to the quiet switches. <laughs> You're a life ruiner. All right, kids. Well, here's a little bit of an update uh, to my fecker build um as you can tell a couple of days have gone by about a week actually actually more uh, about a week and a half uh, reason being is that unfortunately the keycaps that i ordered they were just not the right type uh, the alt function and control keys were much bigger uh, the, sh the right shift key was much smaller uh, so unfortunately i had to pass up on those red keys which I was fine because once they were actually on the keyboard, seeing them in real life besides pictures on Amazon, they looked a little goofy. So I think it worked out for the best. So I got these lava keycaps, uh, which are much nicer. Um, I don't recall what type of keycap they are. I'll probably put it, you know, as a caption right here. But they're the type that are not so much forward facing, but more, you know, kind of straight up, as you can see there. And I also forgot that I bought these gold stainless steel uh, keycaps for the arrow keys and WASD, which, as you can see, they look incredible. Uh, so I'm very happy with those. Uh, I also um, upgraded the volume knob, which is this kind of, you know, boring silver aluminum knob up for this awesome uh, gold um, brushed um, also knurled knob from, I, I think they, it's just like a volume knob for uh, amps and guitars and stuff like that. So that's very cool. Um, very happy with that as well. And overall, the review that I would give this keyboard is, it's just, oh, it's like, it's like typing on heaven on a cloud, really. Uh, my friend Henry said uh, it's like typing on a memory foam mattress. It just does not compare. These dolphin switches are so, so nice. And they don't drive my wife crazy at night when I'm playing. Um, <clears throat> just because they're much quieter than the Cherry MX switches on my Cooler Master keyboard. And they're a lot quieter than uh, the Aqua Kings that I originally wanted to get. So I'm glad I got these as a backup switch. Um, if you have the means, this Fecker board is just beautiful. As an entry level keyboard uh, in the custom keyboard space, it does everything you could possibly want. It's, um, it's obviously affordable, uh, hot swappable switches, uh, wireless Bluetooth, uh, can also work wired, which by the way, another improvement that I made was I installed one of these magnetic uh, easy release cables. That way when I want to charge it, I just throw it in my drawer there. I'll have this uh, USB type C cable ran there and then I'll be able to just plop it in the drawer, snap this on, boom, starts charging, good to go. Uh, no more, you know, jamming it in the USB type C port every single time which will definitely save the port over time. Um, the battery life on this thing is incredible. So like I mentioned before, I've been using it since July 4th. It is now July 13th. Um, on average, I'm using it about four to maybe six hours a day. 
and you can actually check the battery um, level here by holding down the FN key and the backspace and it's still at 70%. So a week and a half of very heavy use and it's still at 70%. That's fantastic. This 8,000 milliamp hour battery packs, they'll last you for, for weeks, I think. Um, by my, my estimation, I think I only have to charge it once a month and I've been using it for hours and hours a week uh, and with the RGB uh, on all day, every day. Uh, even the this little cool accent parameter lighting, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's very cool. It's a little bit more unique than other keyboards that I've seen. Uh, and you can actually change that with the FN, Alt, and right control keys. Um, you can toggle through the mode and through the, the color just by the key searches here. Uh, the RGB on the board, as you can see, is very bright, very vibrant. Um, unfortunately, I had to get these pudding caps. I would love some, uh, some crystal key caps, but unfortunately, they don't make any that will fit the specific size board. Uh, the shift key and the right, um, the right shift, uh, the right alt function and control would, are just completely different sizes, so that wouldn't have worked. So that's why I had to go with these lava key caps, which worked much better anyway. Um, as far as other pros, I'd say the the build experience was relatively good. Uh, if I would have known, um, I probably wouldn't have spent so much time on it. Reason being is that the thing that takes up the most time uh, when you start building it um, right out of the box is that if you want to switch the back plate from metal to the polycarbonate, um, the polycarbonate standoffs are not deep enough to accommodate the screws. So it just kind of floats around in there, uh, which was very aggravating and it's made me spend a lot of time on the keyboard that I really didn't need to. I still ended up doing the, the tape mod on the back to get a little bit more thock, especially since I had to now, you know, end up with the, um, with the metal back plate, which is fine. It works just fine, but it wasn't, it doesn't give me as much thock as I wanted to. So that, that was kind of a bummer. Uh, but other than that, the build experience was quite easy. Um, putting in the, the new switches was quite easy, although if you don't get them just right, you can bend some pins and that's kind of annoying. Uh, so I had to whip out the, the tried and true uh, keyboard tester online so I could see which keys were working and which ones were not. So I could just swap them out real quick. Um, other than that, I think the, the build quality for this thing is excellent. Uh, especially for the price, uh, 70 bucks for a starter board. Uh, it's really, really hard to beat in this market. Um, so if you want to take the plunge, this is an excellent board to start off with. Easy to build on, um, looks great, uh, performs really well, uh, is nice and heavy and just feels solid. It's a great, great keyboard. Uh, obviously, you definitely want to spend as much as you can um, on the switches. That's really what's going to make the most uh, of a difference, especially compared to my old Cooler Master, which I, I used it very briefly, and it feels like going back to, like, I don't know, uh, a GTX 770 or whatever. I don't even know. Uh, compared to a, a 3080 that I have now. It's it's just nine day difference. The keys just feel super plush. Oh, it's it's super luxurious to, to type on. I, I love it and I can't go back to a standard, you know, um, membrane keyboard or even a Cherry M MX keyboard. All of those are terrible. I would not go back. Linear switches is where you want to be, man. This is great. Um, now, uh, obviously there are some cons to it, uh, which I'll go over now. Like I mentioned, the aggra aggravating part of building it was that the back plate was just not working. Um, so they definitely need to fix that. But my biggest gripe uh, just comes down to the software that you need to support the RGB and uh, to build out the macros. Although you can build out the macros on the keyboard itself, but some people like software to accompany their macros so they can visualize it. 
Um, the software is very limited, uh, which I understand. Fecker is a very small company, so I can't expect them to have the customizability or the usability, really, of Corsair or even NZXT or Cooler. Even Cooler Master just software blows away this Fecker stuff. Um, it's pretty limited. Installation on it is kind of janky. Windows thinks it's a virus <laughs> immediately, so it's it's not a great experience. And then what's worst of all is that the the themes for the RGB are pretty limited. Um, the Cooler Master just blows away this type of software in terms of customizability. You can do so many more different things. This is basically very bland very basic themes and this is actually the one that i like the most um i usually go with a water droplet one where you strike a key and then like a ring you know produces itself uh throughout the keyboard it looks really cool um and they do have that type of theme but the problem is that you have to hit a key in order for the keys to be eliminated otherwise it's just off uh with my cooler master you could have a a backline uh, or backlight base color and then each keystroke would produce a different color if you wanted it or would just turn off the keys in a ripple effect that was so much cooler and unfortunately this software doesn't have it which again i understand they're pretty limited on resources i can't expect them to have the best developers to develop their their software um so that is my biggest gripe with it but you know what I can totally live with this. I think it already looks pretty beautiful and I think it matches my Spaceman theme on my um, my wallpaper engine pretty well. It kind of looks like a starry night, which is very cool. Um, let's see, what, can I, what else can I talk about it? Um, I th as far as pricing goes, uh, the, the keyboard was about 70 bucks, which I found on eBay. You know, somebody was liquidating them pretty cheap. Um, the switches were about 60 bucks, if I remember correctly. Uh, the lava keys, uh, keycaps were about, then these, uh, brushed aluminum, um, WSD and, uh, arrow keys, I think were about 15. I got a set from Amazon through their warehouse. So they were a used set, but they were, looked perfectly fine to me. And then this volume knob was about, uh, eight bucks for a pack of two on Amazon as well. Um, so I lost track there. I'll put up the total here. Okay. Um, so I'd say uh, all in all, I'm in about 200 bucks with this keyboard. Super, super worth it. Would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, I think I'm still going to upgrade it a little bit. Um, probably add a, a different type of escape key just because it looks a little you know, boring on this side of the keyboard. Uh, maybe do the insert page up and down keys as well to something a little bit more custom um i was i'm actually eyeing a really cool keycap from etsy uh for the escape key it's actually a spaceman keycap and i'll put a picture of it right here um i think i'll go with that one just because it looks so cool um but yeah I, I think overall at least i'm done with the build uh it's served me very well so far no issues uh very reliable and like I said, if you can save up 200 bucks, get it done. And of course, you don't have to go that expensive. You can do you know, much cheaper switches, maybe some that don't carry over the RGB very well, because these are our clear uh, switches uh, that really let the, the RGB um, really come into full bloom. So you could definitely do it a lot cheaper than I did. Um, but either way, get yourself some linear switches, get yourself a custom board. And if you like, get yourself a Fecker because this wireless capability that I have now, uh, and I'll be putting up another view or, or uh, video about these uh, Cloud Flight S's uh, from HyperX. I'm completely wireless now, which is amazing. I should have done this years ago, but you know what? The, the tech wasn't there because not only are these all wireless, but they're all uh, Qi chargeable. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, the, the mouse and the, the headset are Qi chargeable, so wireless charging here. I can charge them right here on my desktop. Um, now, obviously, this is going to be <laughs> as close as I can get to wireless charging for the keyboard, just 
you know, slapping this thing on. Uh, but I think it's a good trade off for having no wires on my desk, except for the Razer uh, Chroma uh, mouse pad, which, you know, I think I already have so much RGB on the desktop. I may just get rid of it to get rid of all cables completely. And if you guys are interested in a battle station, um, kind of walkthrough showcase of whatever my setup, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to make that video because I like talking about my battle station. This is my, besides my dog and my car, this is my pride and joy. Those are my top three. And then my wife is somewhere in the mix. Some days when she's good. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. If you guys have any questions about the Fecker board or any advice really about how to get it started on your first um, mechanical keyboard build, uh, custom keyboard build, uh, please let me know. I'm by no means uh, an expert, but I am available if you want at least some advice to get you started from somebody that just went through the process. Huge thank you to my buddy, uh, Henry. He helped me research all this stuff just because he uh, went absolute ape shit with his custom keyboard. <laughs> he spent like $400 on his, uh, all the bells and whistles on his, uh, um, I think he has a GMMK Pro, which maybe I'll work up to in the future. But for now, I need the wireless capability on a mechanical keyboard that looks this great and is this affordable. Uh, but yeah, again, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please uh, leave them in the comment section down below. Once again, Thank you so much, Henry. Got another volume knob for you that you can add to your GMMK board. And as always, please like, subscribe, share this video if you like it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.